Hello, and welcome to Nobody Inun series of Warcraft History, where we discuss the lore of the Warcraft universe and the edited lore that was changed for the World of Warcraft game by Blizzard. Previously, we covered the issues regarding the discovery of the Well of Eternity and both the power and influence it would have over the world of Azeroth. Transforming many of the ancient creatures and races of the previous millenniums into the races we know of today. The well's powers would also become a source of arcane power and an addiction, causing some races, such as the jungle trolls and the night elves, to wage wars for territories surrounding the well. Today, we'll be covering one of the most controversial topics in the Warcraft universe, the War of the Ancients. This topic has actually been one of my favorite chapters in the Warcraft saga, and was shrouded in mystery for the longest of time. However, over the years, Blizzard would put out little bits and pieces of information here or there, slowly filling in the gaps. The older books pretty much agree on the same thing, with some major battles being vaguely referred to, events and such, but there is still a great deal of information that is lacking with regards of this specific historical episode, much like the War with the Old Gods. One great flaw with the account of the War of the Ancients is the fact that it has three different accounts entirely. There is the Warcraft 3 account, the World of Warcraft account, and the War of the Ancients trilogy account. I personally was very excited when the War of the Ancients trilogy first came out, but was exceptionally disappointed with it due to the fact that it dealt with time travel and caused problems within the timeline. Although it does offer great insight into the normal timeline as to what should have happened or what was supposed to happen. But it nonetheless is a controversial issue, as noted in the books themselves, even admitting that some events were changed from the original timeline and caused a change in its history. Unlike Nos Dormu's flight, which fixes the time streams themselves, repairing them, making sure destiny itself is met out, and seeing to it that specific events happen as they are required to of fate, the War of the Ancients trilogy didn't really follow that kind of perspective or method of time travel, and it changed events drastically. So let's begin. The Highborn's reckless use of magic sent ripples of energy spiraling out from the Well of Eternity and into the great dark beyond. The streaming ripples of energy were felt by terrible alien minds. Sargeras, the great enemy of all life, the destroyer of worlds, felt the potent ripples and was drawn through their distant point of origin. Spying the primordial world of Azeroth and sensing the limitless energies of the Well of Eternity, Sargeras was consumed by an insatiable hunger. The great dark god of the nameless void resolved to destroy the fledgling world and claim its energies as his own. Sargeras gathered his vast burning legion and made his way towards the unsuspecting world of Azeroth. The legion comprised of a million screaming demons, all ripped from the far corners of the universe, and the demons hungered for conquest. Sargeras's lieutenants, Achmond the Defiler and Manoroth the Destructor prepared their infernal minions to strike. Queen Ashara, overwhelmed by the terrible ecstasy of her magic, fell victim to Sargeras's undeniable power and agreed to grant him entrance to her world. Even her highborn servitors gave themselves over to magic's inevitable corruption and began to worship Sargeras as their god. To show their allegiance to the Legion, the Highborn aided their queen in opening a vast, swirling portal within the depths of the Well of Eternity. Once all his preparations had been made, Sargeras began his catastrophic invasion of Azeroth. The warrior demons of the Burning Legion stormed into the world through the Well of Eternity and laid siege to the Night Elf's sleeping cities. Led by Archimonde and Manoroth, the Legion swarmed over the lands of Kalimdor, leaving only ash and sorrow in its wake. 
The demon warlocks called down with searing infernals that crashed like hellish meteors into the graceful spires of Kalimdor's temples. A band of burning, bloodletting killers known as the Doom Guard marched across Kalimdor's fields, slaughtering everyone in their path. Packs of wild, demonic fellhounds ravaged the countryside unopposed. Though the brave Kaldori warriors rushed to defend their ancient homeland, they were forced to give ground inch by inch before the fury of the legion's onslaught. It fell to Malfurion Stormrage to find help for his beleaguered people. Stormrage, whose own brother Illidan practiced the Highborn's magics, was incensed by the growing corruption amongst the upper class. Convincing Illidan to forsake his dangerous obsession, Malfurion set out to find Cenarius and muster a resistance force. The beautiful young priestess, Tyronda, agreed to accompany the brothers in the name of Elun. Though Malfurion and Illidan shared a love for the idealistic priestess, Tyronda's heart belonged to Malfurion alone. Illidan resented his brother's budding romance with Tyronda, but knew that his heartache was nothing compared to the pain of his magical addiction. Ilden, who had grown dependent on magic's empowering energies, struggled to keep control of his nearly overwhelming hunger to tap the well's energies once again. However, with Tyronda's patient support, he was able to restrain himself and help his brother find the reclusive demigod, Cenarius. Cenarius, who dwelt within the sacred moonglades of the distant Mount Hyjal, agreed to help the Night Elves by finding the ancient dragons and enlisting their aid. The dragons, led by the great red leviathan Alexstrasza, agreed to send their mighty flights to engage the demons and their infernal masters. Cenarius, calling on the spirits of the enchanted forests, rallied an army of ancient tree men and led them against the legion in a daring ground assault. As the Night Elves' allies converged upon Ashara's temple and the Well of Eternity, all-out warfare erupted. Despite the strength of their newfound allies, Malfurion and his colleagues realized that the legion could not be defeated by martial strength alone. As the titanic battle raged across Ashara's capital city, the delusional queen waited in anticipation for Sargeras' arrival. The Lord of the Legion was preparing to pass through the Well of Eternity and enter the ravaged world. As his impossibly huge shadow drew ever closer to the Well's raging surface, Ashara gathered the most powerful of her highborn followers. Only by linking their magics together in one focused spell would they be able to create a gateway large enough for Sargeras to enter. As the battle raged across the burning fields of Kalimdor, a terrible turn of events unfolded. The details of the event have been lost to time, but it is known that Meltharion, the dragon aspect of the earth, went mad during a critical engagement against the Burning Legion. He began to split apart as flames and rage erupted from his dark hide. Renaming himself Deathwing, the Burning Dragon turned on his brethren and drove the five dragon flights from the field of battle. Deathwing's sudden betrayal was so destructive that the five dragon flights never truly recovered. Wounded and shocked, Alexstrasza and the other noble dragons were forced to abandon their mortal allies. Malfurion and his companions, now hopelessly outnumbered, barely survived the ensuing onslaught. Malfurion Convinced that the Well of Eternity was the demon's umbilical link to the physical world, insisted that it should be destroyed. His companions, knowing that the Well was the source of their immortality and powers, were horrified by the rash notion. Yet, Tyronda saw the wisdom of Malfurion's theory, so she convinced Cenarius and their comrades to storm Ashara's temple and find a way to shut the Well down for good. That passage can be found in History of Warcraft, Chapter 1, under The War of the Ancients, and it occurred approximately 10,000 years prior to the opening of the Dark Portal.
This next passage can be found in the Warcraft RPG, page 20 through 21, under The Coming of the Burning Legion. The mighty Highborn became haughty and decadent as they grew in power. Unknown to them, their abuse of and obsession with the Wells' otherworldly energies attracted the attention of a terrible race of creatures that fed upon magic. These beings, demons of the Burning Legion, dwelled in an extraplanar reality called the Twisting Nether. Sensing the sudden bloom of magical energies on Azeroth, these demons were drawn to Kalimdor like flies to a corpse. The barrier between realities kept the demons from feeding directly upon the well's energy. Not to be denied, Sargeras, the Dark Titan and Lord of the Burning Legion, exerted an unholy influence upon the nobles of Kalimdor. As Sargeras began his subtle manipulations, his lieutenants, Archimonde the Defiler and Manoroth the Destructor, prepared their infernal minions to strike. Queen Ashara and her highborn servitors, overwhelmed by the terrible ecstasy of magic, fell victim to Sargeras's undeniable power. To show their allegiance, the highborn aided their queen in opening a portal within the depths of the Well of Eternity. Though insufficient to allow Sargeras entry, it was enough for the Brennan Legion to begin its assault. The warrior demons stormed through the Well of Eternity and laid siege to the Night Elves' sleeping cities. Led by Archimonde and Manoroth, the Legion swarmed over the lands of Kalimdor, leaving only ash and sorrow in its wake. The demon warlocks called down the searing infernals that crashed like hellish meteors into the graceful spires of Kalimdor's temples. A band of burning, bloodletting killers called the Doomguard marched across Kalimdor's fields, slaughtering everyone in their path. Even packs of wild, demonic fellstalkers ravaged unopposed across the countryside. Nature rose up in shock and anger against this violent intrusion from beyond. The seas roiled as demon fire rained from the skies. The Kaldori were shaken enough from their arcane haze to recognize the severity of this threat. They did what they could, but the Burning Legion was the manifestation of destruction. Cities were blown apart like fallen leaves, and the Night Elves were pushed back as the demons savaged their once idyllic realm. The following passage can be found in the Warcraft RPG, page 21 through 22, under The War of the Ancients. It fell to a young Kaldori scholar, Malfurion Stormrage, to find salvation for his people. Malfurion had long felt incensed by the growing corruption among the upper class. His own brother, Illidan, practiced the Highborn's magics, but Malfurion convinced him to forsake his dangerous obsession and help battle the invaders. The young priestess, Tyronda Whisperwind, agreed to accompany the brothers. The three heroes met with the reclusive demigod Cenarius, who brought the aid of the powerful dragons. Led by the great red leviathan Alexstrasza, the dragonflights agreed to engage the demons while Malfurion looked for a way to banish them from the world. Malfurion was convinced that the Well of Eternity was the demon's umbilical link to the physical world and insisted that it should be destroyed. As the well was also the source of the Night Elf's immortality and powers, his companions were shocked by the rash notion. Yet, Tyronda saw the wisdom of Malfurion's theory and helped convince Cenarius and their dragon comrades to storm Ashara's temple. Illidan was unnerved at the thought of never again wielding magic and resentful that Tyronda had chosen romance with his brother rather than himself. Fear and jealousy curdled as Illidan vowed to protect the well's powers by any means necessary. Malfurion found his brother missing, but assumed only that he could not face the thought of destroying the well. Though heartbroken by Illidan's departure, Malfurion was committed to his course. The Highborn were in the midst of summoning Sargeras when Malfurion's forces struck, but they were far from surprised. Illidan had already whispered to Ashara of the plan, 
and she unleashed her mighty powers upon the attackers. Tyronda fell even as she made to strike the Mad Queen, sending Malfurion into a murderous rage. The battle between Malfurion and Ashara threw the Highborn's carefully crafted spellwork into chaos. The vortex within the well's depths spun out of control, and the Well of Eternity collapsed upon itself. With its link to the well severed, the Burning Legion was flung back into the primal chaos from whence it came. In the ages that followed, they would become the stuff of legend. The final passage can be found within the Warcraft 3 manual under Night Elves, the Sentinels, Night Elf History, the War of the Ancients. The Highborn's reckless use of magic sent ripples of energy spiraling out from the Well of Eternity and into the Great Dark Beyond. The ripples of energy streamed out into the twisting nether and were felt by terrible alien minds. Sargeras, the great enemy of all life, the Ravenger of Worlds, felt the potent ripples and was drawn to their distant point of origin. Spying the primordial world of Azeroth and sensing the limitless energies of the Well of Eternity, Sargeras was consumed by an insatiable hunger. The great dark god of the Nameless Void resolved to destroy the fledgling world and claim its energies as his own. Sargeras gathered his vast demonic army, known as the Burning Legion, and made his way towards the unsuspecting world of Azeroth. The Legion comprised of a million screaming demons, all ripped from the far corners of the universe, roiled and burned at the thought of conquest. Sargeras's lieutenants, Archimonde the Defiler and Manoroth the Destructor, prepared their infernal minions to strike. Queen Ashara, overwhelmed by the terrible ecstasy of her magic, fell victim to Sargeras's undeniable power and agreed to grant him entrance to her world. Even her highborn servitors gave themselves over to magic's inevitable corruption and began to worship Sargeras as their god. To show their allegiance to the Legion, the highborn aided their queen in opening a great swirling portal within the depths of the Well of Eternity. Once all his preparations had been made, Sargeras began his catastrophic invasion of Azeroth. The warrior demons of the Burning Legion stormed into the world through the Well of Eternity and laid siege to the Night Elves' sleeping cities. Led by Archimonde and Manoroth, the Legion swarmed over the lands of Kalimdor, leaving only ash and sorrow in its wake. The demon warlocks called down the searing infernals that crashed like hellish meteors into the graceful spires of Kalimdor's temples. The Doom Guard, a band of burning, bloodletting killers, marched across Kalimdor's fields, slaughtering everyone in their path. Even packs of wild, demonic fell hounds ravaged the countryside unopposed. Though the brave Kaldori warriors rushed to defend their ancient homeland, they were forced to give ground, inch by inch, before the fury of the Legion's onslaught. As we can see, the sources all draw to the same conclusion of this war's outcome, yet many of the specific details and some major events have been altered due to both revisions and due to time travel. The War of the Ancients trilogy, for example, has created two distinct timelines, known as Timeline Prime and Timeline New, among fans. It was thought that for the longest time that the War of the Ancients trilogy was nothing more than a non-canonical piece of literature. However, Blizzard considers the War of the Ancients trilogy to be an official documentation of the history regarding the War of the Ancients. Blizzard has stated that any and all forms of literature dealing with their story must be approved and accepted and is to be considered a part of the lore. Thus, the War of the Ancients trilogy is both canon and conflicts with traditional lore. Although it is arguable that the War of the Ancients trilogy takes place in Timeline Prime 
and then goes back in time to create the timeline new. In other words, the War of the Ancients trilogy would not be the original version of the War of the Ancients, but is something new entirely. The war had already occurred in the timeline prime, and heroes from that timeline went back into time and created the new timeline, called Timeline New. Thus, the war was altered into a new version of the War of the Ancients, due to the interference of the time travelers. The War of the Ancients is a war that pits nature and its primordial creatures against the demonic powers of infernal chaos itself. There are many battles, massacres, and genocidal events that are depicted in the war, passed off in vague details, or suggested at in the historical accounts of the War of the Ancients. Only fragments of their historical events remain. Until Blizzard fills in the gaps, there is little we know that entails the entirety of the war. However, there are several large-scale and detrimental battles that we are aware of. Such battles would be the Fall of Saramar, or the betrayal of Neltharion, and so on. Nevertheless, there is a great wealth of information regarding the war. We know the combatants of each side, and some of the commanding officers as well. The combatants fighting for the Kalandori resistance included the Council of Nobles, the Sisterhood of Elune, the Moon Guard, Cenarius' host, the primordial deities, the keepers of the groves, the dryads, the ancients, the ents, the trents, the furbolgs, the five dragonflights, the rock giants, various creatures of nature, mythical beings of nature, and in the altered timeline, the earthen, the tauren, and the time travelers. The known combatants fighting for the Burning Legion included the Highborn, the Shendralar, the Loyalist, various Kaldori nobles, Satyrs, Shadowbats, Bellstalkers, Imps, Sayads, the Succubi and Succubus, Void Walkers, Void Terrors, the Moarg, Felguards, Infernals, the Nathrezine, Dreadlords, the Eridrun, Fiends, Demons, Terror Fiends, Doom Guards, Terror Guards, and Doom Lords, the Anahillans, Pit Lords, and the Eridar, Minari, Warlocks, and Wrath Guards. It is believed, though currently unknown, that many other subspecies of demons participated in the war but are yet to be confirmed. The commanding officers that we know of are as following. For the Kaldori Resistance, Lord Curtolus Ravencrest, deceased, Lord Destel Starai, deceased, Lord Delthian, Deceased, Lord Black Forest, Deceased, Captain Jared Shadowsong, Senior Officer Latosis, Deceased, 
Archdruid Malfurion Stormrage, Demon Hunter Illidan Stormrage, Lord Dathramar Sunstrider, High Priestess Dejana Deceased, Priestess Marinda Deceased, Priestess Tyronda Whisperwind, Priestess Maeve Shadow Song, and various other leaders whose names have yet been revealed. The primordial deities, the demigod Cenarius, Malorn, deceased, Ursoc, deceased, Ursol, deceased, Agamagan, Deceased, Omen, Driven Insane, Goldron, Believed Deceased, Tortolus, also known as Tortola, Aviana, Deceased, The Fox Ancient, The Wolverine Ancient, Deceased, the Panther Ancient, and various other unnamed and unrevealed deities at this time. The Dragon Aspects, Alexstrasza, Neltharion, Driven Insane, Malagos, Driven Insane, Nasdormu, and Yursara. And the altered timeline officers include Crossus, Ronan, Broxagar, Deceased, Dungard Ironcutter, Ung Ak, and Whole High Mountain. For the Burning Legion, Lord Archimon the Defiler, Lord Manoroth the Destructor, Hakar the Houndmaster, and Captain Azanoth the Demon Champion, deceased. For the Highborn, Queen Ashara, Lord Counselor Xavius, deceased, Prince Tortheldron, Captain Verothan, deceased. Parathorn, Lady Vosh, and various other leaders whose names have yet been revealed at this time. Ultimately, we know the final outcome of the war and the consequences that would follow it. We know it was during this war that many of the races of Azeroth would branch off of the Kaldori themselves and many of the powerful deities of the world would give their lives to protect it. We also know it was because of this war that some unique warrior classes would be created in order to combat the Legion, most notably the Demon Hunters, which would also cause the creation of the Wardens. The Demon Hunter is a warrior class that would be created by Illidan Stormreach himself and would inspire many other Night Elves to follow in those same footsteps. It was the pursuit of combating the powers of chaos by using its very own power against itself, with the combination of sorcery, stealth, and a very unique fighting style involving dual warglaives. These combinations created an exceptionally deadly warrior that put fear and terror in the hearts of many demons. Whereas the Wardens were created after the war to keep an eye on suspicious Kaldori individuals, to be employed as assassins, bounty hunters, and jailers. They would be sent out to capture Kaldori fugitives, especially those who used demonic powers or arcane magic, such as the demon hunters, and were trained in the fiercest and harshest combat training, able to wield incredibly intricate and deadly weapons, employ their own supernatural powers, 
and used various shadow abilities to counter those they hunted. Maeve Shadowsong was the first of the Wardens, and would later award her sisters and watchers the title if they had proven themselves worthy of it. Some other interesting disparities between the War of the Ancients trilogy and the original account would be the timely intervention of both the primordial deities and the dragons. For example, in the RPG, Cenarius himself organized the dragons and the ancients all together in a cohesive unified army and attacked the legion together. According to the RPG, some of the primordial deities could not wait for Cenarius to unify everyone and acted on their own, attacking the legion by themselves and inflicting massive damage to their forces and causing major setbacks for the Burning Legion. However, according to Richard Knack's account, Cenarius unified only some of the ancients and didn't bother with the dragons at all. The dragons continued to be reclusive and act on their own entirely, and only intervened when the dragon soul was complete. This may have been an alteration in the timeline, as according to the RPG, the dragons were active for almost the entire length of the war until Notharian brought out his new secret weapon and attempted to subjugate the dragonflights. But this never happened in Nax's account. Another notable difference between the three versions is the fact that some of the primordial deities died at various battles throughout the length of the conflict. In the RPG account, for example, Agamagan and Ursul both perished in one of the sieges of Suramar, whereas in the WoW account it is believed, though unconfirmed, that Agamagan died in the Southern Barrens, and his skull is the entrance of the Razorfen Downs. Whereas in the trilogy, Agamagan and all the ancients and primordial deities who perished in the entire conflict all died together in one battle at the same time. Though nearly all the specifics of the accounts vary, we do know the following happened. 1. The Kaldori continued to use their power recklessly and play with the Wells' energies. The Highborn with the Shen Drilar under Queen Ashara's orders began to tap into the well, diving deeper into its depths and using more of its energies, casting more difficult and complex spells while performing dangerous and powerful experimentations, ignoring all those who warned against it. 2. The Highborn eventually made contact with the Burning Legion, began to worship Sargeras as their god, and summoned the demons through the well and into their world. 3. The demons began pillaging, raiding, and killing everything in their path hoping to rid the world of all life before Sargeras entered into it. Many of the Kaldori people turned to their queen for help, but were only fed to the demons, as most were seen as unworthy of their mad queen's new world. 4. The Kaldori people and nobles eventually were split in half, those who opposed the Highborn and those who were loyal to the queen and her Highborn followers and eventually joined them. 5. The resistance clashed with the loyalists and demons all across the Night Elf realm. Many battles, some known and some unknown, occurred. Many genocidal events, massacres, and battles took place. 6. Realizing they would never win, Malfurion Stormrage convinced his brother Illidan Stormrage and Tyrande Whisperwind to seek out Cenarius to enlist his aid. The resistance would continue to clash with the demons in their absence. 7. Hundreds of the most powerful Highborn would eventually mutate and turn into satyrs, being cursed and twisted by the will of the demons. Their manipulation of fell energies and addiction to arcane magic only hastened the process. During Malfurion's quest, Illidan struggled immensely with his addiction to arcane power and would suffer from withdrawals. Tyrande helped Illidan through his episodes, and his feelings for her would strengthen. 8. After finding the demigod, Cenarius set out to convince the other ancients and primordial deities to take action 
and join in the war. 9. Some of the primordial deities would act on their own, inflict massive casualties, and cause major setbacks for the Legion. 10. Cenarius eventually arrived and reinforced the resistance with his own forces. Battles continued to rage for some time across the Kaldori realm. 11. Illidan at some point captured and performed the Demon Hunter ritual on the powerful demon captain Azanoth, though it is arguable he just killed him. Illidan became the first Demon Hunter and began to turn the tide of the war in the Resistance's favor. Illidan would strive fear and terror in the hearts of many demons and would be referred to as the Demon Hunter by them. Many of the Resistance fighters looked up to Illidan as an unbeatable war hero. 12. Many Kaldori fighters would follow Illidan's footsteps and become demon hunters. 13. Naltharion at some point betrayed the Resistance and his fellow dragons during a major battle. Naltharion attempted to enslave everyone, including the demons, by using his new secret weapon called the Dragon Soul, later renamed the Demon Soul and become the new god of the world. Naltherian was confronted by Kralostras, who was absent from the disc's initial use, and Kralostras was able to stall Naltherian long enough for the other dragons to free themselves from Naltherian's magic. Malagas attempted to stop Naltherian and destroy the dragon soul, but he was blown away by its vast power. Angered by the blue aspect's audacity, Naltherian would attempt to wipe out the entire blue dragon flight in his madness. After using the device on the blues, Naltherian noticed his body was beginning to tear apart from the stress of the device and his own unstable power, and was forced to flee. The dragons then abandoned the resistance out of fear of the disc. 14. Though the resistance had finally pushed the legion back, Malfurion realized as long as the portal remained open and the Highborn maintained access to the well, the Legion would always pose a threat to their world and never stop coming. Malfurion would attempt to convince his comrades to destroy it, but only caused debate. Argument broke out amongst the leaders, but with Tyrande's assistance, Malfurion convinced Cenarius to attack the Eternal Palace with his forces. The resistance would follow Cenarius soon after. 15. Illidan left the resistance, angered that Tyrande had chosen romance with his brother and that they had decided to destroy the well. Illidan would flee to the Eternal Palace and warn Ashara of the coming attack. During the siege, he filled seven vials up with the well's water and fled the battle. 16. During the final battle, the well was ruined and destroyed in the ensuing chaos. It cracked the world open and caused the sundering. 17. Both the portal and the well were destroyed, flinging all the demons back to the Twisting Nether and halting Sargeras' entrance into the world. Nearly all the primordial deities had been killed in the war, along with many heroes on both sides. The Aldori race had suffered massive casualties, while even more had transformed into various other races. 18. Ashara and her highborn were blasted to the bottom of the sea, transforming into the vile Naga, while others had transformed into satyrs during the war, and continued to do so afterwards. Others had begun to suffer from withdrawals, and would eventually transform into the Quildori. 19. The dragons eventually managed to get a hold of the dragon soul, and the aspects cast a powerful spell upon it, so no dragon could ever wield it. The dragons then hid the disc deep beneath the world. Though it is impossible at this time to give an accurate and an officially confirmed chronological list of events of the War of the Ancients, we can only try to piece them together, 
I will be posting a mini-series of events that occurred immediately before the War of the Ancients, during the conflict that we know of, or that have been mentioned, and the events surrounding its closure. This is, of course, an unconfirmed chronological list of events, as Blizzard hasn't given a full list at this time, nor have they released all of the events that have transpired in the Timeline Prime. It's also impossible for us to know at this particular time what events have been altered by the Time Travelers in Timeline Prime, other than what has been stated as such in the trilogy. We do know of some events occurring without a shadow of a doubt, However, there are many pieces of information in this conflict's history missing, and thus we can only speculate or try our best to put the known pieces together to try to understand it. Thus, this is what I will be doing, and will attempt at making the most complete version of this war. The list will be composed of references from World of Warcraft and Game, the War of the Ancients trilogy, the RPG guideline and history books, as well as the Warcraft 3 Manual and Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos RTS game. If you are interested in the Altered Timeline version, the War of the Ancients trilogy by Richard A. Knack gives the account of that version. Or you can watch a Machinima movie version of it on YouTube. The film covers the first portion of the trilogy, with some portions of the second book included in it. It should be noted that the War of the Ancients trilogy has the events play out in roughly the time frame of about one to three months. However, most other sources include events that most likely occurred longer than that. The length of the entire conflict is also something that Blizzard has not shed any light upon, though if we are to take everything into account from the earliest sources, it can be assumed, though still unconfirmed, that the length of the entire conflict was probably more likely to be between six to nine months. Finally, some of the events have been granted official titles, such as the Fall of Suramar, or Neltharion's Betrayal, and so on. However, since Blizzard has still not given many of the battles or conflicts within the war official names, some fans refer to specific battles or events with an unofficial name or title. This is only done to distinguish the different battles amongst the fans. I will be using these names along with the official ones to help distinguish between the various battles and conflicts, so no one will be confused with the battles when I do a video. Because if I refer to a battle simply as the battle, people will get confused and generally won't know which battle I am talking about. Uh, it is to help others understand that I am speaking about a specific battle at a, a specific time. However, having said that, it is detrimental that you understand and keep in mind most of these are not official titles and have not been given these names by Blizzard. There are some that have, but most have not. So, they are not considered canon, nor should be considered official. Also, some of these events are vaguely mentioned, referred to, or briefly touched upon in various sources, while others are given a great amount of detail. This further complicates the understanding of this war, and I only mention it because it needs to be. I had planned on simply giving this list in this video, but it was so long there was no way I could fit it all in here, and personally, I don't think it would have been appropriate for this video as this is simply a summary and a general overview of the war. So if you are interested in that list, stay tuned because I will be making a series of videos dedicated specifically to it. So that's it for today. This concludes the War of the Ancients. Thank you for watching today's episode. If you want to see more episodes and comparisons, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to message me. Also, don't forget about our Facebook page that is up and running. The link to that is in the about box. Until next time, I will see you on the next episode.